Anyway, this is a story about school in uh, uh, County Clare. And uh, it's a kind of a humorous story in one sense and in another it's uh, maybe a bit realistic of what uh, us young lads uh, growing up in the uh, mid 50s and 60s uh, went through going to religious schools. So anyway, uh, here goes Limbo. Sounds from the town seeped through the tall monastery windows and mingled with the Hail Mary. The wine of the sawmill, milk churns rattling home from the creamery, horse carts creaking, motor cars honking, people hailing each other. An assurance that there was another world out there after school, and that someday the monastery would only be a memory. But now we were having a prayer break with Brother Man. After the break, he resumes his tirade, prancing around the room like Groucho Marx. Mahoney hears the little rattle as he passes and writes pills on the cover of his grammar book. I make a check mark with my finger. The brother was back and the pills are right and it was written all over the monastery. The trouble is with you is that you don't want to learn if you. Now it isn't the lack of brains that's affecting you. And I'm saying that in plain English so you'll understand. No, you have brains all right, but you're as lazy as sin. He hauled it behind the table and waved a bundle of homework copies like a tomahawk. He glared at us and asked, have you any shame? And then he closed his eyes and leaned forward on his tiptoes. A smile ran around the class. All right, he said dropping the bundle of blue copies on the table with a dull tug. All right, now a simple three-page composition called What I Can See From My Front Door is not a lot to, lot to ask 20 hardy young 15-year-old fellas to do. I was making it easy for you. He paused and his eyes shot open. But such, such utter thrash, he went. Such utter filth I have never read in my entire life. Stop grinning, Horn. I'll write light that leer from your puss when your turn comes, then you can be sure of that. Brother Man could go anywhere with the pills. Sometimes he jumped over desks three at a time, kicked our school bags and glared at us like he said God would on the last day. Other times he could be great fun and tell us stories about the world and how happy he was to be a monk. And one day, he played a whistle in class and we sang rebel songs, but that only happened once. It was hard to tell how the dice could fall with the pills, but today, things were looking grey. Today, he had no hope for us. He said we had nothing to look forward to but on Bad Bon, the immigration we were born to immigrate, he said. It was in our blood. We were not worth educating. Sons of small farmers and publicans, we were the flotsam left behind by the tide. His eyes closed slowly, and he beckoned us to stand. Another Hail Mary for Our Lady smiling in the corner. Brother Man wrapped the copy books against the table. I have a few right gems here. First, O'Loughlin. Where are you, O'Loughlin? Here, brother. O'Loughlin, what in hell's blue blazes are you doing at Freeze desk? Brother O'Brien put me here. Am I Brother O'Brien, am I? Is this Brother O'Brien's class? Come up near me and stay in your own style in future. O'Loughlin moved like a defendant crossing the courtroom. Now, said Brother Man, we all know Master O'Loughlin is descended from a great line of bards. His families were the chief bards to the Earl of Kilty. The eyes closed slowly, but that was a long, long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> now, O'Loughlin, tell me, where do you live? <laughs> Castletown, brother. Louder. Castletown. Now, O'Loughlin, if you live in Castletown, how in the name of God and his blessed mother 
can you see the air night show you And before you answer, spell island. O I L A N D. Another man was in fits. Donny, Donny, spell island for your cousin. Cousin, are you a landy? <laughs> no, Lachlan. Remember that you blog our head. But no, tell us, how can you see Aaron from your front door? Uh, I was only using my imagination, <laughs> said Lachlan. Well, don't bother to use your imagination in this class. Use your brains instead. Sit down and give me peace. He made exception for O'Loughlin, who was a brother or an uncle in the order. O'Loughlin was timid, but not so his cousin, Fanta Dooney. Dooney, did you write this? I did, brother. Are you sure you didn't get a bit of help from someone? No, brother. I mean, yes, brother. No, 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 no. <laughs> Which is it? I did it myself, brother. <laughs> All right, hand me up a copy without the paw marks the next time. Coin was nibbling paper when his turn came. Coin, you fathead, said the monk. Stop stewing, stewing the cud like a good bullock. Coin <laughs> was a nervous wreck and fidgeted with the piece of paper he had been nibbling. A white envelope with a note from his mother which he handed to the monk. What is it this time, he mocked. You ran out of candles. Or have you given me that excuse already? <laughs> Brother Man knew that that I kind drank the cheap creamery check every month and was more often in court than more solicitors in town. And Willie could only muster up a half page about a view that was part of a nightmare. Brother Man read the note, closed his eyes and whispered, take this thing back and give me a full page by Friday. And then he beckoned for another prayer. A few copies skimmed through the air, nothing of great substance, fair attempts to conceal the monk. Then there was Murphy's. Waving Murphy's copy, he glanced around the room. <coughs> Murphy has switched seats and was now sitting at Clancy's desk. Murphy, yet you, get back to your own stable. What in the name of God are you doing in Clancy's seat? He didn't answer, just flashed a grin and walked back to his own perch. Murphy was world-wise, smoked wood binds, drank beer, backed horses and played poker. <laughs> For him, school was just a place to pass adolescence, to punch in time between summers and getting wiser in the ways of the outside world. He had run away from three boarding schools before joining our team. He was considered a high-risk pupil, even though he was the local sergeant, so. He had the finest of views from his front door. His house looked down on the town and the river, but he ignored it all and wrote about the monastery instead. <laughs> Brother Man cleared his throat and read in a mocking voice, The monastery was built in 1829 by a band of monks from Dublin. It had very big gardens, and one time the monks used to make cider, which they sold. The monastery is across the road from the town hall. He shook his head. I was waiting for him to tell me that the band of monks played in the dance hall. <laughs> Tramps, trash, Murphy. What in the name of good God has this tribe to do with anything? Murphy shrugged and smiled as if saying, hey, life's just like that. And a nervous Twitter escaped from the back benches and Kerrigan was ordered to stand at the head of the room and face the statue of Our Lady. It's the likes of you, Kerrigan, who encouraged Murphy to dish up this kind of tribe, and I wouldn't mind. But nowhere does Murphy mention the name of the monastery. Murphy, stand up. What's the name of the school? Saint, um, the monastery. The monk looked at us, his jury, and shook his head. Saint Patrick's, he howled, arching his back like a cat. But what does it mean to you? Your father will find your way into some job. Sit down, you clown, and give me peace. And the Lord's copy fell apart as it sailed over. Our heads covered the parting from the body. Mine was next, then Freel's, and then Horton. Horton, come up here to me.
to him. Oh! Horn edged to the head of the room, and the monk withdrew a black hush and said, out with it. Horn's hand trembled, and the monk lashed it six times, becoming more demonic with every stroke. His eyes were blazing, and his head and neck glowed when he turned around. Horn, he panted, give me up a yarn about a football match. It had nothing to do with his front door. He entitled it a day I will always remember, and he'll remember today, and that's for sure. The taste of blood put Brother Man in another world. The animal in him was roused, and he became a school by his nightmare. His nostrils flared, and he looked possessed. Satanic, the voice got shriller, and he strutted around the room, petting and views at us. We were failures. And if we were the best our parents could produce, then God help Ireland. <laughs> but while we were in his class, we would pay attention to him and to do the correct homework, not like Horton. He rummaged through the copies. He was frantic and scattered them all over the floor until he pulled Cairns from the chaos. Where are you? Behind you, brother. We'll stand over here where we can see you and don't always be looking like a moon calf. Kevin, what's the meaning of this drill? Where do you live? Bolin's Lane. Bolin's Lane what? Bolin's Lane, brother. All right. And have you anything else to write about but, but a tinker's brawl? Huh? How dare you hand this up to me, this drill about two families murdering each other? And that, that, that's all I think about. I, I could think about, you see, we, we, we had Yanks home from Boston. <laughs> Shut up your lungs and come here to me. And Brother Mahan gaffed him by the ear and lifted him like a piece of meat from the floor. Brother Mahan pleaded, Brother, I know brother, I have brother. Now listen to this, Sally. He. Carrigan is a type of fool who's a cute fool. And when he leaves here in a couple of years, what will he do? Like his father and grandfather before him, his first port of call will be the dole office. And then he'll put his feet up, warm his toes to the fire, and wait for dole day. All right, he'll get married, get a council house, free milk, shoes and butter. His wife will give him a child every year, and when they're crying for attention, our hero will be down in the town, strapping pine supporter or holding up Coleman's corner with his broad back, passing spat remarks to other cute fools like himself. Kerrigan wept and wriggled with rage. He staggered loose with a scream, and Brother Man jumped away from him. Go back to your hovel, Kerrigan. Our class was battered, beaten, and humiliated. The monk closed his eyes and slowly whispered that we could always pray. Prayer could move mountains and even get us to heaven if we were lucky. But we were too lazy to pray, he said sadly. And everything began with prayer. If we didn't pray right, then nothing could be right. And from there he wandered off to the foreign missions and explained the great work that monks were doing harvesting souls. He wondered aloud if anyone would like to take up the work. But our heroes were not into black cloth. Anyway, seams of the outside world had already permeated the class. Cigarette smoking was rife, swearing was commonplace, and girls often came up with conversation. There were few vocations here. A cloud came over his brow when he picked up the last blue copy, the main feature. Stand up, Gregory McNamara, and face that lass. Now, McNamara, I know all your brothers and those who went before them, but you're the worst of the brood, you great big jackass. <laughs> what in the name of God do you mean by handing me up this shovel of dung for my breakfast? What? His eyes darted from pupil to copy. A simple essay that a nine-year-old child in the heart of London could write. And a 15-year-old Suttuk from Lee Hinch can only come up with this manure. 
Namara was doomed for the back streets of Soho, like his brothers before him, Brother Man said. He was bound for sleaze and slaughter. There wasn't even a flicker of hope. Stand to attention, McNamara, and face me. All right, to begin at the beginning. It was only yesterday morning I was wondering what kind of a view we would have if we had a front door to our house. We only have a back door to the kitchen. <laughs> All right, said the brother. So far, so good. But listen to this. Our house faces not spelt in O R D in the direction of Russia where Napoleon was born. <laughs> His voice trailed off in horror. I'll read that again, just in case you didn't hear it. In the direction of Russia where Napoleon was born. And listen to what comes next. The great monk Rasputin was Napoleon's son. <laughs> and a neighbor of my grandmother's knew Rasputin. A red flag to a bull. But the man was aghast. He closed his eyes and seemed to be praying for patience at the school bell or a pill. Oh God, that's true, says McNamara. Oh God, my grandmother taught me that herself. You bloody bog man, cried Brother Mahon in tears. You a heretic. How dare you insist that Napoleon was born in Russia and that he sired last beauty? <laughs> McNamara blushed and looked towards the Blessed Virgin. The monk was breathing heavily, his knobbly fists clenched, and on top of all that heresy, McNamara dropped this bombshell on me. <laughs> they made great vodka in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> they made great vodka in Russia. What in the name of sweet God and his blessed mother has all or any of this to do with the great view you have from the front door he go past? <laughs> Answer me, McNamara, you ass. McNamara shifted his weight from foot to foot and stared at his desk. Brother Man was tortured. Mention of drink, Rasputin, and Red Russia. The same page was the height of treason. He dabbed beads of sweat from his brow. Answer me, he screamed, stamping his foot. Uh, I wish up for something to say, McNamara said suddenly, hoping to stonewall the charging monk. Gregory ducked Brother Man's fist, and he slid under the desks like an eel. The monk ordered him to stand by the wall, firing in threats of expulsion and terms in hell. He moved under the desk, which scattered out of their way and grouped at the head of the class. Jesus, lads, is real, but this is getting fucking serious. <laughs> Come out of it, McNamara. Come out, for Brother Man. Kicking over school bags and topping desks. Come out of it and get up to the superior, you pagan. He flushed McNamara from cover and lunged with him with a groan. And suddenly, alarm crossed the brother's face. And we saw him stagger, then tumble heavily on the floor brought down by Murphy's school bag. <laughs> the door banged and McNamara was gone home. The monk was robbed of his kill. <laughs> but the man struggled to his feet and dusted himself. He stared at us and looked bewildered like he had just fallen through the ceiling. What are you doing there standing like a flock of sheep, he said. Go back to your seats, quickly. <laughs> we were only sitting down when he ordered us to stand up and face the statue of the Blessed Virgin. We are now going to offer up a decade of the rosary for all those in need, he said quietly, eyes closed and slowly. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost began Brother Man, tears rolling down his face. <laughs>